Well, here he is again, the fat old Cornishman. Uh, on my last tape or oh, video, I said that if, if um, there wasn't many views, I'd gratefully fade into obscurity and call it a day. But um, uh, I don't think there's been enough views myself. Um, but Mike, Mike Hurst is very, very persuasive. <laughs> And uh, so here I am again with another little one and he just wants a dip, do whatever you want. And uh, so what I thought I would just quickly talk about is, um, is the Royal Marines or my time with the Royal Marines. I mean, when I left school, I uh, went and worked on, I went to sea as a, a ship's boy on, um, on the tugs out of Plymouth. I had a wonderful couple of years and um, uh, experienced many things actually, but um, what happened well i love the job but um the unions got uh, more and more involved and um y you know this this they they wanted basically more money for less work and and um i just couldn't equate to it and i guess i was young and really couldn't articulate my frustrations but i did have this work ethic work ethic that i got from my parents and um and i guess r really being brought up uh, around farming and uh, it, this just didn't sit square with me. But there were some wonderful people, these really in beacons of light, really, during this time in the crew. And these were former Royal Marines. And what I just loved about these guys is they were just a joy to be around. And um, they had this great approach. If, if you see a job, do it. If you do a job, do it well. Work hard, play hard, make the most of life. And um, so I just thought, right, bugger it, I'm going to go and um, I'm going to go and join something more positive. So off I went and um, signed on the dotted line. Really no idea what I was getting into. Uh, this hasn't seen the light of day for, I don't know, must be nearly 30 years. I, I dug it out. I went and I got, fortunately your head doesn't put weight on it, it's shrunk a bit, but there we go. My blue steel look. Uh, I got my green berry. And I'm very proud of my green berry. Um, but of course, when you go into these things, you, you kind of think you know what you're, what you're signing up to, but of course you have no idea. And effectively, um, you go uh, to Limpston, where the training is, just, just down the, the River X from Exeter, and you step onto this platform, which is dedicated to the Royal Marines Training Center, and in you go, and you go on this journey. And it is the most amazing journey. It's transformational. And uh, I've, I've always seen it as the university of life. And um, obviously you learn lots of skills as, you know, radios, guns, or all, all that sort of stuff. But um, the, the, the really deeper part of it is, is learning um, the commando spirit and learning how to work as a team and, and learning about the, the things that, that make life worth living, living and, and make a real difference. So I thought I'd touch on them. They're all characters and uh, larger than life. I remember one sergeant had us all um, lined up and he, he gave us a very disdainful view, all us scraggy civilians. And, uh, uh, and he said, well, I, I ain't no effing Einstein, but I do know Newton's shit, theory of shit. Shit rolls down hills and from where I'm stood, you're in the bottom of the valley. <laughs> you think golf, and off we went. But um, you know, they 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 have these set ethos. So I mean, I I actually look them up, and uh, their group values are excellence, integrity, self-discipline, humility, courage, determination, unselfishness, cheerfulness, and no one would. Um, disagree with any of those uh, and you know I come across a lot of companies and they have all these these things that they write down but um, for me what really um, uh, uh, powers that 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 group approach is is the individual commando spirit and and I think that's the biggest lesson that you you leave uh, the Royal Marines training is six months which compared to most military training is is far far longer so you know, they're, they're a very, very professional um, unit respected around the world. So the commando spirit is courage, determination, unselfishness, and cheerfulness in the face of adversity. Those are the four things. 
as an individual Marine that you leave within your back pocket and will serve you for the rest of your life. And I just thought I'd touch on a few things. It's very interesting, you know, we, we had um, a big group joins up and uh, um, some are timid, some swagger in and uh, not many of them pass out. I can't remember the figures. I think 60 of us joined up and I, I, I don't know, it was, it was certainly less than 20 that passed out. And um, if you were to line them all up at the beginning, uh, the, the sort of, the, the shallow view you'd pick the winners, you'd probably be wrong. You get the big, strong, down there, square chin, you know, made to be a Royal Marine. And uh, many of those just don't make it. And then you'll get a scrawny little runt on the corner uh, and they fly through. Well, they don't fly through, they really struggle, but what gets them through is their, is their mental attitude. And um, I remember we had one guy, Percival Percy, and um, he, I mean, he was a, a boy Marine, so he would have been under 17, and um, a gust of wind would blow him away, we'd have to grab him by the collar. There was nothing to him, it was about eight stone. And, uh, it, you know, he did it, he did it. We, we, oh man, I had so much respect for him and others like that. So. What the thing with the Royal Marines is, is, is it gets underneath the, the physical gift that you're given and digs away for the heart and the soul and the spirit and the mental strength. And those are the things which earn you your, your, green, your green berry. And, and there is a lot of determination required. I mean, I remember we on a nine mile uh, speed march, um, we, we'd had diarrhea had gone through the troop and you know the medical people said well you you mustn't go but of course you you have to go and um i remember one guy had got so ill and dehydrated that he couldn't see but he kept running and just held on to the the, the harness of the guy in front of him and um basically just made his body take it uh, and pass the nine mile march you have these set um commando tests at the end of training of which one is is the um nine mile speed march and and to me that that really is is um you know you see marathons and all the rest of it but you seldom see determination like i've i've seen in the royal marines and um you know unselfishness i mean there's endless stories but i remember one of the uh it wasn't a commando test but one of the things on exercise was a 50 mile load carry and um so at the end of an exercise quite quite a tiring exercise you had to then march 50 miles back to the base and um that was with a, a jerry can of water on your back which is quite heavy in your weapon and and you just march all night and um i i didn't realize you can fall asleep walking <laughs> you can i tell you i've seen it and uh, you'd be marching along and a guy would just sort of keep going but he'd just toddle off in, in a different direction and you could steer them back in and they'd keep on tromping away and and they'd wake up again and um but that was that was really hard load carry and and you know two or three in the morning when you're absolutely at your pits and people are starting to fall by the wayside um the ones and it was interesting all of these tests different people's physical capabilities would um make them stronger or weaker in different tests and if you had a strong test then you would help the weaker ones because when your weak time came along they would help you so it's all about this 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 selflessness you know and and helping people and 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 i remember there was um a couple of guys on that who used to suffer on the speed marches and the, and the faster paces stuff but they they were just like mules you know they could carry anything forever and there's one guy um you know carrying three weapons and uh, just trunked away and we all got through it so um, you, you know, it's very much a case as you're as, as strong as the weakest link, but if you help the weakest link, then the whole thing is, is, um, is raised. And at the end of that, you know, people were wringing blood out of their socks and stuff. So again, the, that, um, that, that determination. Cheerfulness in the face of adversity is a wonderful, humour is a wonderful thing, you know, you just laugh at it. Whatever they get thrown at you, you just laugh at it. Water off a duck's back, the sun will come up in the morning, uh, and away you go. So these are the things that have stood me in really good stead. I, I scribbled some things down here and um, uh, what have I put? I, I can't... Uh, 
Yeah, that was an interesting thing I learned in terms of leadership was um, you, one thing is uh, they have very, very high standards and um, the standards can only be reached if you're shown what they are. And so I, I, it's, it's really obvious, but I, I, I hadn't seen it um, taken to the extent that they did. You, you, you could never, ever be bollocked unless you had been shown what was expected of you, taught what was expected of you, and then, you know, you, you would practice it. So you really, you had no excuses. And if you, if you didn't live up to something, you stood there and you took it and you knew you deserved it. So, I mean, it's funny, really. When we joined up, the first week was basic. You know, you got your hair cut, you, you, uh, you were shown how to have a shower, you were shown how to shave, you were shown how to iron properly, um, uh, and these, these basic things. And, and so, you know, it, once you, you knew the standard and you were given the skills to attain that standard, only then would you start to be picked up on it. And uh, that was when uh, you, you really did find that you were in the bottom of the valley <laughs> you made some, if you made a mistake. We had this wonderful, well, lots of wonderful sergeants, but particularly one of the drill sergeants, Jesse James, who um, was a, a wonderful man. And, um, and I think it's very important to, to point out that, um, you know, they weren't there to do you harm. They weren't there to bully you. They were really hard on you. But the thing about these guys is they really, really want you to pass. They've been through the same training. They know what it's like, but they will never, ever allow standards to be eroded this is what you're living up to you know you're living up to the green berry and this epitomizes or represents thousands and thousands of people who've gone before you and uh, by being given one of these you're being entrusted to maintain those standards that were set many years ago and um you know i, I jesse james i think of him often you know and and um he, he had a massive impact on my life. Well, as you get older and you look back, you, you really start to appreciate um, uh, these things. And, and um, what happens is uh, o over time is um, things begin to run themselves. And uh, the, the onus is uh, on individual uh, discipline system. So you have a troop, you have a section, and then it breaks down in terms of team to a buddy-buddy system. So you have a buddy and you really look after each other. You're making sure you eat properly. When you go out, you check each other kit. So they're, they're your, your shadow for each other to make sure that you're, you're in good shape. But I remember I learned, uh, it's funny how these things, there's always like that little light bulb moment. And we had this exercise and it was awful. It was, you know, it was in the winter, it was on Dartmoor, and if I remember rightly, it was called Hold Fast. It was a defensive exercise, and you learnt how to dig trenches and all the rest of it, and it, you marched all night. And I remember we were digging a trench at night, and um, I think it was snowing. It was just awful. And of course, they find the hardest, rockiest ground on, on Dartmoor, and we're digging away. You've got blisters and uh, virtually hypothermic. and. Uh, and again, I don't remember, but let's say a trench is five feet long and four and four foot six deep and so wide. And um, we'd got down to four foot five inches and dawn was coming and we knew we were going to have to be up and off again. And um, there was a sergeant major who'd come and visited our training team and he, he walked around and uh, um, I remember we were in the trench and he, and he had a look at us and, and, and I remember saying, is, Sark Major, is that all right? Thinking we've got to four foot five inches and um, should be four foot six. And he just looked at us and he just said, standards, lads, standards. And off he walked. And he really left it up to us. And that was when I realized that um, to be a, a Royal Marine or to, 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 to get on with life is it's really about you. And if you're in a team, it's the individual that um, uh, makes it work. And, um, you know, so a leader needs to know that his team will always deliver. Otherwise, he's looking over his shoulders and checking. And you as a team want your leader looking uh, 
forward. You know, he's got knowledge and experience. He's reliant on you. You've got his back. He's looking forward. He's not there for your back. You're there for his back. And um, so, yeah, yeah, that was interesting. And funnily enough, on that theme, when I, when I, uh, you know, left training and went on um, uh, to, to, to serve, um, I, I realised that I was very lucky in that I joined the Royal Marines because I had started to rub up with other military units and um, one of the things about the Marines you know obviously on the parade ground it's yes sir no sir and, and all the rest of it but when you're in the field it's it's first name terms you are encouraged to challenge authority well not necessarily authority you're you're encouraged to challenge decisions and if you don't agree with with what's being put forward you're encouraged to stand up and say oh boss I think I've got a better idea and he'll listen to it. And if it's a better idea, he'll be a big enough person to, to go with it. So um, some some people have this perception, oh, I could never be in the military. I could never be told what to do. You're not told what to do all the time. You're encouraged to take individual responsibility, to put your hand up, chip in. Um, you know, the group think is much more powerful than, than the individual leader dictating. And uh, it was funny, actually, when, when we ha ever had... Uh, U.S. Marine officers seconded to the Royal Marines, they would start off, they would be absolutely tearing their hair out because they would be saying, right, you dig, you sleep there, you s I'm not sleeping there, boss. If it rains, it's going to be a puddle. I'm sleeping over here. And they threatened to put you on a charge. Well, fill your boots, you know. And um, in terms of navigating, no, we're not going to go that way, boss. We're going to feel, follow the contour. And if you don't like that, we'll meet you at the other end. And um, it used to drive them mad, but uh, towards the end of their tour, none of them wanted to go back. So it, it's quite interesting, um, you, you know, how, how the Royal Marines um, work. And then, I don't know, funny little stories. Um, I, I remember uh, we, we had to do, I, I was in this um, company which was involved in, in Camacho Company Internal Security, and this was protecting the oil rigs from terrorists and, um, and protecting nuclear weapons. And it was really good fun. And uh, we had these amazing transit vans which were all souped up. They could overtake anything. But anyway, I'm digressing. There was a load of NATO generals wanted to have a demonstration of what we were doing in terms of house clearing. And um, they were on the other side of Scotland and it was decided that our troop, I was in, in um, three troop, that we, we would go over and give them a demonstration. So fine, all good fun and whiz bangs and things. But um, we, we were caught up in some work which delayed us and um, we didn't have time to go over. And then of course, as these things work, the, the, the RAF, it was on an RAF station, the, the command commandant there said uh, uh, there's no way he was going to let a load of marines um, run around smashing up his building so there was another issue so the sbs had a this this plywood house which they could blow doors off and do things and it was easy to repair so the great and the good decided well what we'll do is we'll take that part it'll go over on a truck we'll assemble it on the airfield when three troop comes in they can have a night's kit um, sign out their weapons and then a helicopter will fly them over. Uh, they can do a practice run and we can show the scrambled eggs how it all works and then we'll be back for supper. So it all sounded good to us. Had a good kit, woke up in the morning. Um, there were delays, uh, we flew over. We couldn't do a practice run, um, but as we flew over high, you could see that the, the house was up. So that was all gonna be good. Um, we were told to hover behind a, a building out of sight. The generals came out in the bus. They all got out, nice big line. Uh, on came the radio, in you go. So there we are in the back of this helicopter like sprung steel. And um, what what we used to do was that the helicopter would, would fly in and then, and then literally go vertically to break. And then as it leveled out, a big rope would get thrown out the side of the helicopter. I, it was pretty long. Um, about that thick and um, what we would all then do is you'd literally run out the door past the rope and as you went past it you'd grab it and we had leather gauntlets and you'd drop down the rope and break with your hands which could smoke you know it was oh, so much fun and um, we did it a lot so it was bread and butter to us and and the goal was to drop down 
well literally let go drop down on the bloke below with your boots and try and split his ears and um, uh, so anyway um, all the generals are out we're behind the building get the green light in this thing comes it shudders and uh, like that drops off rope goes out out we go perfect bang we've all hit the ground we're all spread out and um, the helicopter had blown the house away <laughs> so embarrassing and uh, I remember we all stood up and and uh, our corporal just slapped his ass and said giddy up and we all ran off the airfield but um, so the lesson there was preparation preparation and preparation but one of the things that I think I'd like to touch about the Royal Marines is how it's a family and um, you, you know there's some really really hard people in there doing very very difficult work I mean the young Marines now over in in um, you know Afghanistan and and uh, Iraq it's absolutely terrible what they're facing and you sort of have this image of, of uh, a desperate Dan kind of character and and some of them are but they they are lovely people you know they a lot of them are, are wonderful people and um, I remember again as a youngster you go in a troop and the oldest sweats, we'd call them old sweats, they would be saying have you written to your mum this week son, you know, have you got a bank account and, and it was this family that would, would look after you and there was this sergeant major called Jack French and Jack French was an absolute legend, he had medals all over him, he'd been in active service all over the world and he was a giant of a man and, and you know if Jack said jump even the officers would ask him how far and um, we we had a, a young lad uh, we, we we didn't know but he'd he'd lost his mum and um uh he was called into jack french's office shaking like a leaf thinking he was in for bollocking and we were up in scotland and he came i think it was from plymouth it was a long long way away and it was on a friday and and jack sat him down and and um uh, uh broke the news to him and um, sent him back to his accommodation. He said, pack your bag, son. And um, Jack turned up in his car, he'd phoned his wife and he drove him all the way down to Plymouth, um, helped him through this awful period, helped all of the family. And then he drove him all the way back to Scotland um, on the Sunday night. And um, it was a really interesting thing for me, you know, this, this, um, this rough ass hero that we were all terrified actually we suddenly found that he had a big soft heart within him so anyway i think that's probably enough enough for me now that's uh, oh god that's 22 minutes okay mike there you go that's your lot for now hope you're all well good to see covid lifting up wash your hands on the outside flush with red on the inside keep smiling you know make the most make a good fist of what's in front of you that's what it's all about cheers now